Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Rust in 2025. We're going to start by optimizing Windows, and after that we're going to look at your Radian and NVIDIA parameter. Uh, after that, I'm going to show you how to force DLSS 4 in the game, and at the end we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings, and we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're gonna start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power uh back then uh, we were recommending to use the best performance but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that Another thing uh, I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the um overlay so nvidia overlay i really recommend to deactivate this one sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering you're losing some fps with it so i really recommend to deactivate it also we're gonna go to the control panel i'm gonna show you some optimization that you can do so we're gonna go to the manage 3d setting first so the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode make sure this one is at on Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's 4 gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're going to struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also, you can change it on Windows or your Radeon driver if you have a Radeon car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. This is pretty much it for the NVIDIA parameter. Now let's go to the Radeon one. So now for Radeon card, we're going to go to settings, display first. 
Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, Fluent Motion Frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game. But this one can help with uh, older game. Uh, don't use Anti-Lag 1, this one is not good. Don't use a Radiant Boost. Radiant Chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. Hey, just a quick break. If you want cheap games, you should check out Instant Gaming. I was on their site earlier and I saw that Clara Obscure Expedition 33 is on sale right now, way cheaper than normal. They have games for PC, PlayStation, Xbox and more. And don't worry, it's not a shady website. The games come from real official reseller. Their Trustpilot rating is great and they have a support open 24-7. You can also look at the uh, trending section, bestseller and pre-order section. Uh, there's always something new there. The link is in the description. Now let's get back to the video. So before going inside of the game, I'm going to show you how to force DLSS4 on Rust. So first of all, click on the three dot and make sure that you refresh to make sure that everything will be there. Click on your Rust game, scroll down. So the first thing that you will need to do in the uh, DLSS override, you want to select the latest version. Right now I can apply because I'm already using it. So you're going to make sure that you're going to force DLSS 4. So apply it. And after that, I like to uh, to push also the super resolution by the NVIDIA app. 
because uh, sometimes I, I I was getting some weird bug in Rust. I was losing my DLSS randomly. So just push the quality. Uh, by default, it will be at 67% uh, input resolution. You're going to get like 10 to 12% boost in your FPS. And then honestly, the LSS4 looks amazing in any game. Uh, if you want, you can use custom also. If you want to, I don't know, to use 50%, uh, something like that. You can do it by yourself. If you need more performance, I recommend to go with balance. 58% is a good one. You can gain like 15 to 17% boost in your FPS. So let's go back to quality. And now let's, let's launch the game. So now inside of the game. So first of all, the field of view, I like to play at 90. Uh, you're going to see more stuff in front of you. But really important to understand more field of view equal less FPS. So if you're struggling to run the game, don't go too crazy with this one. Maybe put it at 80. Uh, always deactivate Edbub, uh, too much distraction. FPS counter, I recommend to use Advanced plus Ping. You want to see the difference between your FPS but also your ping, as you can see over here. Are you lagging because of your internet or because of your FPS? And uh, after that, in the physics section, this one is really important. Max Gib, put this one at zero and deactivate creation effect. It will help a lot with your FPS. Now let's go to screen. In the screen, make sure that you're playing native with your resolution. So don't downscale your resolution over here. Uh, mode, make sure that you're playing full screen. This is the best one for to, to have the most of your FPS. I don't use VSync. VSync will add input lag when you're playing a game. And, you know, it's a PvP game. So uh, I, I don't like VSync. Use G-Sync or FreeSync if it's available to you. And that's pretty much it. And also, I lock my FPS with the NVIDIA app. So I'm not using the FPS limiter. But if you have to do it, do it, do it over there. Graphic section now. So I'm going to show you all the different parameters uh, inside of the game. And it really depends on your goal. Do you have like an eye refresh rate monitor, uh, depending on your resolution, depending on your GPU. So I'm going to show you uh, all those settings because you have a lot of different options. So first of all, render scale, make sure that you just stay at one. It really depends, again, if you're forcing it with NVIDIA app, uh, you will downscale your game, but the uh, DLSS will upscale it back. Um... I like to force it with the NVIDIA app because the DLSS in this game, sometimes it just go back at off randomly. So I don't like to, to do that. So that's why I'm forcing it with NVIDIA app. I don't use DLAA. This is the best image quality that you can have if you're using DLAA. But honestly, you're going to lose like 10 to 12% in your FPS. So not a good setting for Rust. Global rendering, this one is huge. Make sure this one is at off. You're going to save a lot of FPS with this one. And it's to show building like very far in the map. I'm not a huge fan of that. So deactivate it. Now let's talk about the those uh, slider over there. You have global uh, render distance. Always use something like 1000. If you're struggling, definitely go a little bit lower. Uh, if you compare 1000 to 500, you can expect like 4% difference in your FPS. So uh, again, just do some tweaking. Shader level, I recommend to go with uh, something between 300 and 350. Draw distance can take a lot your FPS, but I feel like a, a good compromise is 1,500. If you have a pretty good PC, go with 2,000. If not, try 1,000 because for each 500, you can gain like 4 to 5%. So this is pretty huge. Parallax mapping, water quality, water reflection, those one at zero. Uh, water will tank a lot your FPS in this game, so very important. Grass displacement, I recommend to go with on if you want to see uh, the, the weapon and the grass and stuff like that. It's better for visibility. Grass shadow off, you can expect 4% boost over here. Uh, the NVIDIA reflex mode, I recommend to go with on if you have uh, this available to you, depending on your GPU. Uh, precise terrain billboard, soft particle, those one at off. And the last one, this is pretty much like new settings, a pixel light count, particle ray budget, those ones, zero and four. LOD bias, something like three or 3.5. Don't go too low with this one. Uh, you will have a lot of pop in to see animals and stuff like that. So if you have a, you want a good experience and a good balance between uh, the image quality and your FPS, go with three minimum. Texture really depends on the amount of VRAM on your GPU. Uh, so if you have something at 6 gig and more VRAM, honestly, go with off resolution per texture and 16 for anisotropic. If you have something like 4 gig, 3 gig, use quarter resolution over there. Shadow, this one will give you a lot of FPS, but also uh, you can have a lot of noise in it. So my recommendation 
to have 10 percent boost in your fps and have no noise in your shadow in the quality put this one at one shadow mask mode go with shadow mask go with medium don't use cascade and those two options over there at zero and you will have a nice improvement and your uh, shadow will still look good in the game after that you have mesh quality uh, at particle quality this one tank your fps like crazy so go with zero Object N3, I recommend to go with 100. And Max 3 Mesh, I recommend to go 100. Honestly, Max 3 Mesh, if you're too, too, too greedy with this one, uh, you will see a lot of noise in the in the, the trees and it's really painful to, to play the game like that. So my recommendation is go with those settings. And Terrain Quality, Grass Quality, Decor Quality, go with zero. In Image Effect, if you don't have DLSS, so you have like a, a, an NVIDIA card with without uh, RTX or... A radian i recommend to go with fxaa it's a basic anti-aliasing that will provide you a good uh, anti-aliasing in the game without too much noise and if you're using smaa or tsaa honestly the game is too blurry so use fxaa for the rest of everything just go with off and real inclusion will give you a nice three percent boost a uh, sharpen i recommend to activate it even F with fxaa or even with dlss you don't have a sharpening filter in this game normally when you use dlss you have that option zero to one and you just select whatever you want so definitely activate this for better visibility and for the rest of it just go with off uh, the last one is experimental uh, automatic processor affinity. I recommend to go with on partial over there for the GC buffer. It really depends on the amount of RAM that you have on your computer. So for an example, if you have 32 gig of RAM and more or something like that, just max it out. If you have 16 gig of RAM, go with, with something like 2048. If you have 8 gig of RAM, go with something 1024. So it really depends, just adapt it depending on your RAM. So this is pretty much it, guys. If you have any question uh, on Ross, uh, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.